let's solve part D now. So what would happen if the marginal cost of snow plowing dropped below 8 euros? Well, let's see. We still have the marginal benefits as they were and the marginal cost would be less than 8. Now, the marginal cost is less than the maximum willingness to pay. It's less than the maximum willingness to pay for Telma and also for Luis, meaning that both of them would be willing to contribute to snow plowing. And even by looking on the graph, if we go back to question A, I think, where we had the graphs over here, if the marginal cost would be less than 8, so this was the marginal utility, let's say the marginal cost would be somewhere over here, let me just use a different color, if that would be the marginal cost, we could see that it would intersect with the marginal utility at a certain level in both cases. So indeed, both of them would contribute. Now the question is, how much would they contribute? Well. We must, we must keep in mind that this is a public good. So there is, there is an opportunity for free ride. So this are an opportunity for free riding. And let's, let's do an extreme case. Let's do an extreme case where we actually have free riding. Would that be efficient for the society? What is free riding? It means one of the guys is going to contribute entirely to the snow plowing while the other won't. He won't, uh, he, he won't invest any money. Who is willing more to pay? Who is willing to pay more? Telma. Telma is willing to pay more. That's maximum willingness to pay of 12 versus 8. Let's assume the case that Telma would contribute entirely. So she contributes all the money. She contributes. The other guy, Luis, free rides. What would happen then? So if Luis free rides, it means that his marginal cost is going to be zero. Now, if we go back to his graph and the marginal cost for Luis is zero over here, if we plot the marginal cost for Luis over here, the marginal cost would be zero, right? That would be the marginal cost. What's the intersection with the marginal utility? Well, it's at the intercept of the Z axis and that would give him a snow plow required of four units. So an, an optimal level of four units for Luis. That's when he maximizes his utility. He doesn't want any more than that. Now, let's see if Telma can make Luis happy as well, even though he is free riding. So. Telma has a marginal utility of 12 minus Z and her marginal cost would be less than 8, right? That's the, that's the assumption. The marginal cost is less than 8. For the sake of the example, let's say that the marginal cost would be 7. What, put, what would be the optimal, what would be the optimal amount of snow plowing that Telma will do? Well, the optimal amount of snow plowing for Telma will be equal to 5 and this is a public good. Now, remember, remember that this would maximize the utility of Telma. So this is maximizing the utility of Telma and also 5 is already greater than 4 which was the amount that maximizes the utility of Luis. So this maximizes the utility of Luis. What does that mean? Because this is a public good, Luis is happy with the provision that is there and although he doesn't want 5 units, he will consume the 4 units that he wants to maximize his utility and the additional units that are left, in this case let's say one more extra unit, will still provide happiness utility for Telma. In other words, we can see that both consumer maximize their utility even though only one of them provides, only Telma would contribute. So the free riding here, even though, even though it's a free riding example, it's still efficient. There is the maximum utility for both people in the society. So that would be efficient if the marginal cost of the snow plowing drops below 8. Hope this makes sense and we are done.